<clears throat> can you hear? We can hear you. Sir. All right, okay. So there was some. Evening, sir. I was wondering. Yeah, good evening, everybody. We are live now, and I hand it over to our CSRC chairman for further proceedings. So, what do you say? Thank you. Thank you, Ashwin. So, good evening, friends. It's the second day of uh, Bone and Joint Week 2021 of Indian Orthopedic Association. And today we have with us Honorable President IUA, Dr. B. Shav Sankar, uh, Dr. Ramesh Sen, Vice President IUA, uh, our President. Uh, I'm so sorry, President-elect Dr. Ramesh Sen, Vice President Dr. Atul Srivastav, uh, Honorary Secretary Dr. Naveen Thakkar, and the today's star speaker Dr. S. Raja Sekaran. He was, it was his brainchild to start the Bone and Joint Day in IUA, and we have him here today. He would be discussing about and talking about work-life balance. So I'd request our President IUA, Dr. B. Shiv Shankar, to give us few words. Thank you, Dr. Anup. Welcome, Dr. Rajshekaran and all the people here for today's webinar on work-life balance. Who else better than Dr. Rajshekaran, the doyen of orthopedic surgery in the world? We are lucky to have him talking to us live today and he'll be sharing his experiences and how we can balance our work and life. Thank you, Raja, for accepting our invitation and to be part. I must again congratulate Dr. Rajshikran because in, during his tenure in 2011 and 12, that uh, 4th August, the day on which our IOA was chartered in 1971, so 4th August, he made sure that it was declared as Bone and Joint Day. And also during his tenure as president, there was a special commemorative stamp and cover of uh, Indian Post Department, which was released. That is uh, something which is unique in orthopedic, which he was instrumental in getting it done. And his association with this road traffic accident and giving talks everywhere has really helped in the government understanding the problem in India and uh, he has filed the PIL also against uh, the Indian government to improve the road condition and other things, which has fruitfully given positive results. So he's a very active person as far as uh, not only for his professional life, for the social activities also for the well-being of everyone in the country. Friends, I'll not take much time. Yesterday, on 1st of August, we have started the Bone and Joint Week and we have already covered more than 25,000 people in teaching the basic trauma life sciences and life support activity and also imparting the knowledge of golden hour and the importance of that to young people. The whole week we are conducting activities. I request all of you to take part in this. Once again, I remind you that the theme of this year is save self and save one. Save self is for your own well-being, like the activity we have today, work-life balance. And save one is to teach younger generation so that people, especially accident victims on the road are taken care of. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, sir. Uh, now I'll invite our Vice President, Dr. Atul Shivastav, to say a few words. No, we are all eagerly waiting to listen to Dr. Rajashekaran. So I will not bite into his time. Please, sir. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. So, yeah. Please, sir. So I'll again invite Dr. Rajashekaran to start his talk. Sir, please. Yeah. Uh, good evening to all of you. It's a great pleasure to join with all of you on this Bone and Joint uh, Week celebrations. And I think it's a honor for me to give this talk in the presence of the entire presidential line. And I thank all of them for being here with us today. So let me share my screen. And uh, this day actually brings back uh, 
the memories of uh, the August 4th on 2012. When I was the president and we actually moved a lot of effort with the government to declare this as the Bone and Joint Day. Now this meeting was in the ISIC in uh, Delhi and we had the union, union cabinet minister and also the chief justice of the Supreme Court with us to declare the day. And the motto was the strength of the nation is in our bones, stronger bones for stronger India. We were also able to release a special cover on that day by the cabinet minister, Sri Gulam Nabi Asad of that day. And what was very important is that on the back side of the cover, we had this written. The Indian Orthopedic Association was founded on the 4th of August, 1955 four years before I was born, which is being celebrated as the Bone and Joint Day. We members commit ourselves to our vision of preventing disability and restoring the health and mobility of the people of our nation. What is really wonderful is that the spirit of this Bone and Joint Day has been carried and actually not only perpetuated, but also has become better and better with every one of the passing years. And I would like to thank from the bottom of my heart for the sequential executive committees and the presidential line of IOA for carrying this spirit of bonus joint day uh, every year. So thank you very much also for asking me to talk on this important topic of work-life balance. I would like to ask, is it really a difficult challenge and when I discuss this, I have to first make a disclosure. This is a completely personal opinion on personal experiences, and it does not behove on anybody else. What I felt, I would sincerely tell. Now, work-life balance, this phrase itself, I think is a misnomer. Now, two problems with this. Now, it makes you think that work is different from life and life is something very good and work is something bad. And when we use the word balance, it always connotes in your mind that you are trying to balance something which is very good and something which is not so good. And that is why most of the younger generation always think that work is against life, against enjoyment and work is bad and life is good. And we also have on the social media many of these uh, events like this. That on Friday evening, when you go back home, this is what you feel. It's total enjoyment. And when you have to go back to your work on Monday morning, this is how one feels. And you know, there are so many medias like this, which perpetuates the idea that work is not good. Now, my concept of work-life balance, I have to say that I learned it from my parents. And this is my parents. My father actually started the hospital when he was 51 years old. It was 17 beds and two operating theaters at that time. And when it was expanded to 42 beds and four operating rooms, he was 56 years old. And when we moved into another premise, it was 61, and he was 75 years old when the present building was built. At the time, there was a major jump, but it was 75 years old. And now, it is 630 beds and 36 operating rooms, and when the final expansion took place last year, he is 88 years old. And my, he registered for a PhD in Tamil literature at 79 years old and completed it at 82 years. And he was the oldest PhD candidate in the university ever to be given a PhD. My mother, who is just a few years younger than him, she still manages our institution. Powers our plans and aspirations, plans and steals our future. She is a personal advisor to more than 1,900 staff, keeps the teams together, 
And two years ago, she actually planned and powered a big expansion of the hospital. Now, they are 88 years beyond, but I would say that they are 88 years young. And more than that, young and happy and perfectly balanced in their life. Now, if you ask what made them so happy, I can no doubts to say that it was work that made them what they are. Work, performance and achievement have given them the fulfillment of life and happiness. Fortunately, there was no WhatsApp or Facebook when they were young to tell them that they should not work hard and they should retire prematurely. They were fortunate. Now, if you look at what is life for every one of us and for the younger generation, in the beginning, we are all one amongst many. And that is, we are all united by our common wants in life. We all want to make a good name in the society. We want to be recognized for what we are in our profession. We want a certain amount of fame and recognition, which is not only just for us, but it's also for our family. And we want a certain amount of wealth that will make us sustain our family needs and we need good health. And for all these, if it is not good work, what else will give us all these things? I mean, that's the first question that we need to ask. We cannot want all these things, but we should not be hesitant to do what we want. Now, we all have role models, heroes and dream figures. Now, they may be sports figure, or this is Professor Shandu Sundaram, my mentor and professor, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Einstein. It can be prominent people in the social life. But if you look at all of these, there are some things that you can learn from every one of them. They are all different in their personalities, profession, outlook, character, and ambitions. Each one of them is a different stone cut. But one thing they have in common is that they are all capable and they have all executed hard, hard work in their life. Now, this is Steve Robinson. I mean, he actually did 10 years of research and made 500 or more face-to-face -face interviews. And he interviewed people from every walk of life, business, arts, laws, economics, health, design, psychology, entertainment. And Richard St. John, actually also made a big TV serial out of this. And you can see that he interviewed career successes from A to Z, from accountants to zoologists. And at the end of it, when he concluded, he said that he had learned only one important lesson. That is successful people work very hard. Now, Bill Gates was one of the first persons he interviewed. And Bill Gates actually said that he worked most nights until 10 p.m. And in the first seven years of his work, he took only two weeks off in the first seven years. So if you want to be Bill Gates, then you know what you should do. And Martha Stewart actually said, I'm a real hard worker. I work and work and work all the time. And she also said, I find great pleasure in it. And Oprah Winfrey, actually said, these are all the people whom you interview. He said, work means the most to me. I would come into work at 5.30 a.m. in the morning and it was dark and leave at seven or eight again when it was dark. I would not see the daylight for many days together. So it looks obvious that if you are looking at success, then there may be no shortcuts to success without hard work. You may be very talented. You may be very knowledgeable. You may be very skilled. But if you miss the capacity to have hard work, then success will slip you. And that's the easy learning that you can learn from any one of this. So it looks like we cannot avoid hard work. But how do you do this hard work and be happy and balanced again? Now, Richard St. John, actually also told this. 
Now he analyzed what was the cause for the success of all these people. I mean, he's identified 300 plus success factors in the 500 people he interviewed. And he said, okay, he can put different things to different people. I mean, big goals in life, great mentors who pushed you hard, capacity to read and gain knowledge, people who had the capacity to take risks, everything. But these were different between different people. But one thing was common to everybody. And that was the tremendous passion that they had for their work. Now, this actually is the fuel for your hard work, that you have to be passionate. You have to really like, you have to be really interested in what you're doing. Now, Rupert Murdoch, the media tycoon, actually said, it's all hard work, nothing comes easily, but I have a lot of fun doing this hard work. That means he just loved what he was doing. And many of these people actually said, I would rather be doing my work than actually sitting down or lying down in the beach. And Russell Crowe, we know, I mean, he said about passion. The bottom line is, I love the actual job of acting. So when he was asked, you are such a great actor, but why do you practice it so many times? Because you act so naturally. He said, I have to do that because I actually love the job of acting. And Jack Welch, I mean, on whom his life and his success, so many books have been written. He said, I have no problem in going on working because I don't like the job. I actually love the job that I do. So you can see that there is another common theme to what is meant by work. That is, you have to love the job you do. And you never, if you do that, then you never have to work another day in your life. This is a very famous saying. So if you don't have the vitamin P factor put into you, into the job that you are doing. If you do not like the job that you are doing, if you do not find a purpose, if you do not have the passion, if you do not have the love for what you do, then you have to seriously question, are you going to continue this for the whole of my life? And then keep continuously talking against work. That's only going to pull you down all the time. So you need to be convinced and you need to be sure that you have the purpose and passion for what you are doing. Now, that brings another question. If hard work actually gives us everything, then why do people complain about it so much? Why are people all the time creeping about work? Why are people worrying so much on hard work? And that is one of the central themes that I want to tell all the youngsters. You should not con confuse, you should not mistake hard work and stress as one and the same. They are completely different as North Pole and South Pole. While hard work has never killed anyone, stress at work has killed many. And then the trick comes that how can you be without stress when you are doing work? So when does stress come from work or when does work become stress? I think in my mind, there are a few things and I will just tell some examples and then come to you. I think the most important thing, most important thing is if your work does not interest you, then every day's work is a big stress. Now when Kathleen Lane said from Ocard, this is beautiful actually, stress isn't working 15 hours at a job you like. Stress is actually working 15 minutes at a job you dislike. How true. And work is stress when you think you are working for someone else. But you may ask, aren't all of us working for somebody else? You may be a junior person working for your professor. You may be an assistant professor working for the government. You may be anything, but you're always working for something else. Well, you may be employed for some reason by someone else. But internally, in your mind, you have to work for yourself. You have to work for your interest. And I would just tell a few examples for just this. Now, you know that this is one of the most famous paintings on the roof of the Sistine Chapel on the Vatican Museum. 
And when Leonardo Vin Michelangelo was actually employed, contracted to do this, he took four years from 1508 to 1512. But his contract was only for three years. And when the contract was gone, Pope actually said, we can't pay you anymore. And he said, no problem. I would do it, the rest of it entirely free. Because this is what is my passion. This is something which I love. And he wanted to see the perfection, the best of the skill that he had, the best of the passion on the painting put into the roof of the Sistine Chapel. And that passion, you can see, is reflected for so many centuries over here. Now, this is what Michelangelo did. And you know that he didn't do it for just the money. He was employed by the Pope, but he didn't work for the Pope. He painted it for himself. And that's the difference between why you are employed by somebody and why you are working for yourself. Now, this is another important story. Now, you know that in all the temples, at least in South India, you have the flag mast outside the now, apparently, there was one skilled person who is employed, who was contracted to do this. And when everything was there, there is always an idol kept at the top. And he found that there was a small mistake in it. And then he said that he had to bring the whole thing down to redo it. And everybody asked him, why do you even bother? Because nobody is going to have a chance to even look at it from the bottom. And he said, no one will know that there was a problem in this idol, but I know, and so I cannot sleep. So I have to redo it again. So that is the passion and that is the difference, whether you are doing it for your fees or whether you are doing it for somebody else or whether you're doing it for your boss or whether you're doing it for your master. But are you doing ultimately the work on your passion? Now, if you are a junior doctor, definitely you are working under your assistant professor and your professor. That's different. You are learning from them and you are training from them and you are their mentee. But you have to do the job for yourself. And you have to enjoy the learning, the training and everything that you do. And then you will find that there is no stress in your life. Stress riser three is stress comes from monotony and professional fatigue. Now, as you age and as you go around the country and the world, you find that lots of people start complaining about work and the stress at work. And I actually carefully look at all of them who complain about that profession. And then I know that they have never progressed in their profession. And that's one of the reasons that they are suffering from a fatigue and monotony and that's a big problem. Now, Steve Jobs actually said, the only way to do great work is to love what you do, but we know that. But he also asked, when was the last time when you did something for the first time? This is so important. Now, if you have to be interested and your work has to be of continuous interest to you, there has to be a progress in your life and your profession all the time. Now, if you are doing the same thing when you are 35, what you did at 25, and when you are at 45, you are doing the same thing when you were 35, and 55 at 45, it's such a boredom that you will start complaining of work. You have to continuously improve. You have to continuously train yourself. It doesn't matter whether you are the head of the department or the professor. But as a professor also, you need to continuously improve yourself. And that's why I love this word, what Subrata Bakshi said. Institutions and individuals have to reinvent themselves every five years. If every few years you are not learning something new, you are not reinventing yourself and you are not something novel in your life, you will get so bored with what you are doing. And then you start complaining about work and that boredom actually makes your work into a stress. Now fourth, this is also important for youngsters. Stress also comes from mismatch between desire and effort. 
Now, there is a famous saying which says there is no gain without pain. If you want so much gain, then you must be willing to put so much pain. But if you want so much gain, but you're only willing to put so much pain, then you will not achieve what you want to achieve. And then you will find that this difference actually leads you to a big stress. The desire and performance gap, the gap between what you desire to be in life and how much effort you are willing to perform can be one of the reasons why you don't get what you want and that ultimately turns into a despair and stress. So you have to be very clear in your mind. What do I want to be in life? What do I want to have at the end, my end of my profession? And what do I want to do? What do I want to improve? And what do I want my legacy to be when I finish my profession? But apart from all these questions, the most important question is what is down? For all these, what am I willing to give? And what am I willing to give up? What do you want to give? And what you are willing to give up? All, both these are very important for you to learn with me. Because this gap between what you're willing to sacrifice and also what you want in life, if there is a big difference between that, that's a big problem. Wanting the best of work-life balance all the time to your advantage, that's a fallacy. That will not work. Because if you want to enjoy the fruits of enjoyment all the time, but also you want the fruits of hard work, then how will it happen? So this is it. So when you look at people who are successful and you look at their success and what they have got out of their success, but if you forget how many days and nights they have worked hard for it and if you're not willing to put up the same amount of effort, then this will be a big problem. Stress riser six is stress comes when you don't find the purpose in your work. Your work has to be where you are needed and where you can contribute and where you will be useful. You have to know where you belong and to write your own story and song. And you need to see the larger picture of what you're doing. Then work will become interesting. So I have put this in many of my talks, but I don't mind putting again. Now, this is what we tell our junior residents. Now, if you're on your call, and if you get a patient like this at night, 11 o'clock. Now, you can look at it in two different ways. Now, if you look at it as, oh, I have to resuscitate, then we have to do a radical debridement, then we have to fix the humerus, then we have to repair the brachial artery and vein, then we have to do the nerve repair, then we have to do the pedigree flap, and then we do this. Oh, you already become very tired because that's work. But if you see the larger picture, that if you think, okay, what I'm going to do is giving back the right arm to a 10 year old girl. She will lead a normal life. Her dreams will come true. Her marriage prospects are not affected if she doesn't undergo an amputation. And there will be a family ever grateful to you for what you did. And if you look at it, and more importantly, there will always be another 10 year old girl in your family. Somebody whom you love, a daughter or a niece or a cousin or a neighborhood girl whom you really like. And if you associate this patient with that 10 year old girl and think, oh my God, she's just like that 10 year old girl, my niece or my daughter. And then you will have no problem at all. And when you see that they, she, is completely restored after a few months when she comes for your follow up. That sense of satisfaction, that will give you the vitamin P factor for your work, the passion, and you will do everything. Stress is an eight. Is, this is something that every young surgeon should know. Stress is not produced by working hard. Stress is actually produced by poor performance. I'll just tell an example. Now, before that, I'll show you a video. Now look at it. This person is throwing a net into the water. You can see how perfect it is and how wonderful it is. In comparison, this guy also throws the water. And you know, he is so frustrated. Not because he threw a smaller net, 
but because he threw it so badly. And this is the same thing that happens in a medical profession. I really get surprised when I move around the country and in many parts of the world, where people say, our profession is so stressful. Our profession is so stressful and I really cannot understand what is so stressful. Stress comes when you are not doing your work properly. And I don't have any hesitation to tell this again and again. Now, if you have 10 surgeries to do today and all of them went very well, you did the best that you can do and it was all perfect work. I can bet my last penny that you will be the most happiest person when you finish your work and go home. It doesn't matter whether you started at five o'clock and ended at nine, nine o'clock, but if you have done a good day's job, if you have done all your surgeries very well, then you are going to be the happiest man that day. In contrast, if you have done only one surgery that day and you did it very badly, you cut a nerve, you punctured an artery, you fixed a bone badly or something you did. And irrespective of the fact that you worked only for two hours that day, you are going to be so stressed. So stress actually comes from poor performance. And if you don't want to be stressed, you have to invest yourself in good training, in good mentorship, in good technology, in good technique, and do a good job. And that will actually power you to do a lot of good work. So whenever you are stressed, just turn back, cross your heart, and ask a question to yourself. Am I doing a good job in whatever I am doing? And you will sometimes find that you are stressed because you are not doing a good job. So that means you need to do something different or train more or do something, but you need to be good in what you are doing. And the last, one of the most biggest problem is you should not think that being busy that you are productive because all activity is not productivity. And it was Sir Winston Churchill who said this during World War II. He said, Let's remember that all activity is not productivity. My dog Rufus has no time to sit, but I cannot say that his achievements are big at the end of the day. And this is such a powerful thing. Now, if you are not prepared and if you do not know time management, if you are not organizing yourself well and doing things efficiently, you may be working the whole day long and your productivity will be so small that Ultimately, at the end, when you realize that you have not achieved much, then you become stressed. So all this goes to prove that you want success or you want good things in life, then it is only hard work that will give it to you. You can be talented. You can be very skilled. You may have the best techniques. But if you are not willing to work hard, there is only a certain amount you can go up to in your life. But after that, if you want to go up, it is actually good hard work. And the thing that allows you to do your hard work is passion for what you're doing. You have to be organized, you have to be trained, you have to do it efficiently, you have to avoid poor performance, and you have to have the feeling that I am doing this profession for my sake. And if you do that, then it will be really, really good. So we talked a lot about work. Now, what about the other side? What about life? And this is also very, very important. Now, for us to be good, for us to live long, we need good health, we need a family life, we need faith, love in our life, finances, good relationships, learning and recreation. Now, all these are also very, very important because you have to be very strong here also. This is very, very crucial because it's like a big net. If you have a big hole somewhere, it doesn't matter how strong the net is over on the other sides, but you are still a leaky net. And that's why you say, you cannot excel in one aspect of life. But if you are a person who is excelling in one aspect of life, you can have a success for a very short while. You will go very up but then you will come down very fast. You cannot have a sustained success all over uh, 
professional career if you are not strong in every aspect of your life that's why it's very nicely told if you are struggling in one area of your life you will be pretty stressed in every area of your life so the moral of this is pay a little more attention to the areas that are dragging you down for this you need a little bit of introspection and this you know is the famous five balls of life now they say that spirit friends family and health these four balls of life are made of glass and if you drop one of the glass balls it will be damaged or even shattered and will never be the same as it was before but work is like a rubber ball if you drop the rubber ball it will bounce back so if you are have to be little low down in your work for some important reason it really doesn't matter you can always compensate it by doing hard work later and bringing it up but if you lose your health if you lose your family friends and your spirit your moral spirit your internal happiness your spirituality if you lose them then it is doubtful whether they will come back right so you always need to be very careful about that also and the foundation that gives you the internal strength the morale of the fiber that holds your fabric together is the family now this is so very important and when we talk of family now orthopedic surgeons most of us are husbands so i would talk about the better half of us the wife and this is i am very 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 convinced now if you have the, your wife on your side if she dreams your same dreams if you are working together on the same dreams if you sweat together if you perform together and if you achieve things together then that's the perfect work life balance and that's why i always say work life balance is actually work wife uh, balance single most important that balances your life happiness with your spouse has nothing to do with time table i mean while i say that to have a perfect work wife balance that's very important i would like to immediately say that it is not going home at half a days of work it is not even going home and doing whatever you want happiness with your spouse has nothing to do with the time available if you and your wife are happy soulmates if you are loving each other if you understand each other if you know each other then you will enjoy and savor the time you are together little or more but if you are not happy soulmates then the more the time you have together more the dangerous for now you really know that there is a proof for this in covid time covid brought every one of the couples together locked them in their homes and did not allow them to go out so people who come time of less time with their families they should have been in heaven during the times of covid but it is a well documented fact that throughout the world the divorce rates and family breakage and unhappiness grew at the time of covid so it is not how much time you are locked inside the same room but how much you understand each other and how much you are willing to uh, give for each other and happiness in marriage is a very very personal and individualized issue if you think that you have an unhappy marriage because of your work think again i mean i am positively sure that most of the hard working people most of the highly successful people many of them had excellent marriages and it is not because of time but while i say this it is also true that family needs quality time i mean it's not just that you went home early at 5 o'clock instead of 7:30 and then you sat in front of the tv and watched your famous cricket or your football game without talking to anybody that's not it family does need quality time and what about children this is you have to spend a lot of quality time with them and most important thing is children learn about work life balance from parents i learned my work life balance from my parents
and you have to be sure that you are a good example for teaching the children on the value of work and the correct perspective of what is life and if you don't do that that's going to be a disaster for your children you are going to create children who are always not willing to work to the best of their abilities whining about work at home is the worst thing you can do for your children because they will develop with the perception that hard work is not good preaching by example to work hard and to have core values is the best gift that you can give to your children so working hard does not mean no free time for you and your family you need to develop auxiliary skills and have one additional passion and that's very important because it may be golf it may be walking it may be climbing the mountains or it may be gardening it may be wildlife music reading family time anything but you need to have one auxiliary skill and some additional passions and this is being very good now there is another concept that i would like to enfor emphasize to the younger generation when you are thinking of work life balance it is not like that every day you are talking about 50 50% for work and 50% for recreation it's not like that you have to be in balance in your life you have to achieve success in your life by being off balance on purpose now what does that mean being off balance by purpose and staying in balance now the thing is life is not the same every day now there are certain periods of time when you have to be more tilted towards work and there are certain times of time you have to be more tilted to life so it is not exactly that you will be on the same mid pathway between work and life whereas the truth is for success you have to be sometimes more tilted towards work now if you are a plus 2 student and if you have to write the neat exam and at that time you are saying no i will work 50% and i will play cricket 50% then it is 100% sure that you will not be successful in life what you at that period of time for 6 or 7 months you need to be tilted really hard towards work so that you will get a good life later and if you are in your early stages of training you need to work very hard now if you are married and that's the time when your wife is pregnant or delivering or something you need to really make sure that you spend more time of quality life and then it keeps shifting between work and life so if you do that depending upon what is your state of life at that moment what is the demands on your life on that particular moment in your life you really need to be a little bit more tilted towards work or more tilted towards life you will find on an average that you are the most balanced person and you are very very happy so that is exactly what is called as you have to be off balance by purpose and design to remain in successful balance in your life so that is very important so your wife uh, your life is like that but you are in perfect balance lastly when you start your profession you need to decide what you want to finish your profession as you need to decide what is the orbit that you want to play now let it be cricket or let it be an orthopedic surgeon if it is cricket you need to decide whether you want to be the captain of your city club or do you want to play in your districts or do you want to play in ranji trophy or you want to play in the national team or do you want to be in the world level now depending upon what you want you need to be sure that you will work to that level not everybody wants to be in the world level in the cricket and if but but if you want to be in the world level then you need to be really sure that you will put so much of energy similarly if you are an orthopedic surgeon do you want to be the best in your city you want to be the best in your state or you want to be in an international level so if you have to do that if you desire that 
if you desire at a high level of orbit then that energy you must be willing to put in so we discussed about work we discussed about life so let me conclude by saying a few things now work and life perceptions vary between person to person now this is so individualistic not everybody can be bill gates not everybody can be amitabh bachchan not everybody can be uh, steve jobs but if you desire to be that then you have to be really willing to work like steve jobs or bill gates so we all see in the media in the social media whatsapp lots of things which says you only live once so enjoy your life you know that's a very very big misconception and this is one of my favorite cartoons so pir says we only live once snoopy and snoopy actually gives the big wisdom you are wrong because we only die once we live every day you know i just wish that every single young orthopedic surgeon remembers this don't fall for the trap that comes on the crap that comes in the phone and in the whatsapp you only live once so enjoy your life and go and just spend time in the pub just go for a holiday always spend time with it no it's wrong we only die once until we die i think we should live by passion and purpose towards a profession that gives everything do not fall for propaganda that be little work you will be the loser if you do not know the value of work at when you are 40 or 50 you will be the loser and to all my registrars i say unless you work hard and you are successful you say i want to spend time with my family i want to spend time with my family but you know what actually the family expects out of the leader of the family they want a successful husband they want a successful father not having a satisfying work is the greatest stress of all now the greatest fall is when you fall in your own eyes now if you are not successful in your profession you know you lose your self esteem and you may try to circumvent that by telling ah, i don't like work uh, work is bad and all that but you know if you are not successful you will fall down in your own eyes many people retire and then soon after that now this is also very scientifically documented divorces and broken families are more when there is unemployment at home not when they are working hard meaningful work gives the most meaning to life and this all of us have to do as steve jobs said you have got to find what you love your work is going to fill a large part of your life and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work and the one way to do great work is to love what you do and do it hard if you haven't found it yet keep looking don't settle as with all matters of the heart you will know when you find it now when if you find your work stressful if you are unhappy every day at the end of your work then you need to ask yourself some very important questions am i doing the job that i like am i doing something what i love and is it what i am going to do the whole of my life and am i going to keep complaining about myself and my work the rest of my uh, life also remember work and stress are two different entities the reason why worry kills more people than work is that more people worry than work and what gives you less satisfaction is poor performance in life and if you are unhappy really think is it because of my work or is it because of something else because happiness is basically a personal issue in marriage work and life don't blame all your unhappiness on work and you know i have so many doctors working with us i have so many staff working with us and if you ask me to classify them into two broad groups i will have no hesitancy in classifying them as the happy people and unhappy people that group which is happy they are happy when they are working very hard when they are doing more work when they have to go for conferences they have to prepare everything they are happy the unhappy group are unhappy whether they have work or whether it's a light day or a hard day or this thing unhappy people are unhappy 
And you need to be careful that you don't fall into the trap of being unhappy. And this is something I really love. For all people who think that you are overworking for others, I just want to tell you, stop overworking. If you don't want to work, stop working. What will happen? Just imagine you tell today, I am not going to work from today. What is going to happen to this world? Nothing. Somebody will easily fill your space and maybe even they will perform better. So sooner you realize that you are not dispensable. You, you are not the atlas of the world who is carrying the whole world. And don't keep work and life different. And whenever you keep work and whenever you keep life, both as two distinct events, then you have a problem. What you need to do is to make work your life and life your work and give a lot of time to what things that matter you most. Is it possible? Definitely it is possible. Lastly, this is what Woody Allen said in his own natural wit. He said about perfect work-life balance. This is what he thinks is the perfect life balance. 6 a.m. wake up, walk the dog, breakfast with wife, drop the kids in school, work for four hours, lunch with friends, work for two hours, pub with friends, walk the dog, watch TV, play with kids, have sex, watch TV, go to bed. He said, this looks so good. And he said, after 10 days, I will be so bored, ready to resign from life, and I will want to go back to work. So, what has given the biggest purpose and happiness in life is work. And we know that the world has moved forwards on the shoulders of people who have never been in balance. Now, if John Charlie didn't work hard, if Muller didn't work hard, if the group that found out the principles of AO spine or AO trauma didn't work hard, if the people who found iPhone didn't work hard, if people who didn't found electricity didn't work hard, and everybody had been thinking of work-life balance, we know that the world would have been a much, much lower place. That day. If everyone in this world had dreamt of only leisure and relaxation, the world will be such a dull place. In. So think of what will you remember at the end of your life? I can bet you ask anybody who have retired, what do you remember now? What are you happy about in your life? They would not be talking about their annual holidays and their evenings at the club. They will always tell you about their achievements, which is at the top of the mind. So make sure that you, at the end of your life, you have a lot of good achievements and influences. So don't think of premature retirement. Because life will surely retire all of us one day. Life will surely retire us because life is not permanent. And anything before that, I would call it as premature retirement. So work-life balance. I think this whole idea of balance is a mistake from the start because we don't really want a balance. We really want satisfaction at the end of the day. So as I first told in my slide, this is entirely a personal opinion because work and life the perception is so different for everybody, but this is what I would like to tell all the junior surgeons and they should think about all these factors separately and I wish every one of them the best in health and happiness. So thank you IOA for uh, two things, for giving me this chance and also for conducting the bone and joint day in all fiber and happiness. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. S. Raja Sekran, for your wonderful talk. And uh, to can you say stop sharing this? Yeah. So, thank you. I think we all gain a lot of things into what work life imbalance rather than the balance. And rightly said, if I summarize that work hard, enjoy your work, do the work which you love, add meaning to life, taste success. That is what actual work-life balance is. So thank you for giving us this wonderful talk. President, sir, do you have a comment on this? Uh, 
very very well talked and very um, correctly said that you should love the work and then you will love your job otherwise if you are not loving the job you are doing then really the stress will creep in and that is the cause for everything so we should love whatever we are doing so thank you very much raja i don't have anything much to say because you have covered so nicely everything from the beginning of life till the end of the life how we should behave i request dr ramesh sen and dr navin takar also to speak because they didn't get an opportunity to speak earlier ramesh sen sir yeah hello i i think a lot has been said about and i'm really enchanted by the lecture because there was lot many things to learn actually and definitely as was rightly said it is this satisfaction it is the passion probably i mean for me they were the most inspiring thing if you are passionate about it everything is comfortable for you and that is what i take with me i mean it is an excellent uh, deliberation and i'm really very very happy to have listened to it a lot to learn thank you dr raj thanks a lot thank you ramesh sen sir dr navin thakur sir yes dr. yes 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 sir it was a fantastic talk i have heard before but some of the new points i learned today previously i heard the previous talk but certain new things uh, i think dr raja has added and uh, it's very fruitful uh, uh, for a younger generation how to balance it thank you very much sir thank you so thank you everyone uh, dr raja sekran president dr uh, b shiv shankar dr ramesh sen dr atul shivastav dr navin thakkar and all the secretaries and president of all the states and all our members of iua for joining us today and let's hope that we'll further do a lot of training to people in coming week enjoy and happy bone and joint day 4th august thank you everyone thank you very much